All right, guys, you're with a hairy golfer again. Of course, you're with a hairy golfer, you're on my channel. So, I've had a couple of queries about what's in my bag. Now, I did one back in December, which was uh, it was actually a piss take of everyone else who does what's in my bag. So, should we do a slightly more serious what's in the bag? Um, First thing is the trolley, Power Caddy 3-Way 5. It's in the boot of the car and I'm not dragging it indoors. We all know what a battery trolley looks like. Where should we start? Let's start with the feet. Winter shoes, Blackfoot joys, 59 quid. Have the metal spike in. Champ Pro Stingers. So you've got a metal spike in the middle and three plastic ones around the outside. Pretty good for winter. Because um, when you're playing golf, you drive with the feet. The feet are the only contact with the ground. And if you're wearing clogged up soft spikes, well, you're not going to uh, have very good contact with the ground. Put them down. Summer shoes, Foot Joy, Dry Joys Tour. Haven't cleaned them yet. <laughs> Not much time to, till we start playing golf. I gotta, yeah, I gotta clean these next. Spikeless, Mizuno. Why? Because they're seventy nine ninety nine. That's fifty quid cheaper than Foot Joy. You do an awful lot with 50 quid, can't you? Next thing, the bag. Now I've got to get down here. Right. Mizuno cart bag, tall colours. I mean, why not? Now this thing's got a little trick up, up its sleeve, he says, trying to find the prop. The prop is my silver dollar. And I've dropped it in my bag. So I've got to empty the bag and tip it upside down, right? Wrong. This pocket has got a secret zip in it. Open it up. it up <laughs> Ta-da! Didn't have to empty the bag. Silver dollar bat. Let's have a look at the bats, shall we? Recoil, 95 gram. Regular graphite. Filthy sand wedge. <laughs> I haven't cleaned these. How long have we been in lockdown and I haven't got around to cleaning these? So the sand wedge is a 55 with nine degrees of bounce. Why don't I have 13 degrees of bounce? Because I prefer nine degrees of bounce. If I want extra bounce, I can put it on. If I want less than 13, how do you take it off? Sand wedge. Gat wedge. 50 degree. Oh, I haven't told you what these are, have I? Mizuno T7 series. So a 50 degree gat wedge it goes about 95. Sand wedge goes about 75 to 80. Not very far, but I don't care. Irons, 
Mizuno MP18 MMCs. So the back looks like that. God, these are filthy. So what they do, they put a little piece of titanium in the steel, in the mild steel, in the middle, which helps spread the hitting area a little bit. And then in the longer irons, they put a bit of tungsten in the toe, which helps with MOI when you hit it off the toe, which I've been doing quite a lot of the last two years. The force clubs, I don't think I could go back to cast clubs. I've tried them. You know, I tried some super duper cast clubs, but they just felt bloody hard. Now, when I get up to the long irons, these are slightly different. So in this one, you've got the tungsten in the toe, but these are the fly high variant, which means that they are hollow construction. It's still a forged face, so it still feels pretty good. Obviously, it doesn't feel as good as a solid golf club, but it ain't bad. It doesn't feel like a cast club. And there's more weight in the sole to help you get it up. And when I'm striping these pretty good, they're very good. I'm going to have to clean all these. They're an absolute shock. So a hybrid, this is my three iron replacement. It's a JPX 850 model, so it's about five years old, I guess. 19 degrees, 65 gram regular for those who like numbers, doesn't really matter. All that matters is it suits me. I mean, it won't suit you, but it suits me. Pretty good club for uh, long par threes, long par fours and for digging it out of the rough. And I use it in fairway bunkers as well. Um, very versatile club. Far more versatile than the three iron that I replaced it, or replaced the three iron. I'm not sure why I'm showing you these, because you've seen these. These are the SC200 fairway woods, five wood, three wood, non-adjustable, 18 degrees and 15 degrees. What I found with my old fairways, and I've, I've struggled for some years, is the five wood was too close to the three iron and then the three wood was also equally weak. Then I had a big gap to the driver and I wanted to move these yardages along. And these seem to have done it. Still, I'm going to have to learn to hit them again soon, aren't I? Right. The old driver. I mean, it is an old driver. It's a JPX Easy 2016 model. It's very much the Game Improvers Club in that it is exceptionally forgiving, high launching, high spin. And I can hit a fairway with this, but the three wood is showing that although this suits me, there's another 10 or 15 yards to be had by reducing the ball flight a little bit and reducing the spin by a thousand RPM. So, uh, this will go. Now I tried the ST190 last year. I had it in a bag for about six months and then got rid of it. It wasn't quite right. We had a shaft in there that was a little too stiff in the tip. So the ball flight was low and the spin was too low. We went from one extreme to another. So once we get back playing this game, I'm going to go and see James and... Uh, we're going to have a very, very careful fitting session. If I'm going to take this out of my bag that hits fairway, then I definitely need a club that also hits fairway. I can't gain yards deep into the woods. I need to gain yards in the fairway. 
So we're going to go very softly, very carefully. I'm going to try the 190 head again and the 200 head and see which head suits me and see if we can find a shaft that gets me the yards, the ball flight and the straightness I want. It's going to be difficult, but as I say, we're going to go softly, softly. No rush to replace this, but if I can, oh Christ, I'm full of gas again today. If I can replace this, we will. Let's have a look to see what's in the pockets. Actually, I forgot this. So this is my main putter. This is a Mizuno Domino. It's from about 90 or 91. I had all my gear stolen. And that's when I changed over to Mizuno. Because that's what the pro put in my hand. I think it might have been 91, somewhere around about April and May 91. June 91, something like that. Because the irons I got were the Mizuno Faldo ID forged. Not the cast ones, which are big and chunky, but the small forged ones. And that's where I fell in love with Mizuno and where I fell in love with forged clubs. And this is from that same vintage. I always say 1990, but I have a funny feeling it was sort of like early summer 91. And the, the, the Faldo IDs has only just come out. Anyway, I've had this a very long time. I wouldn't swap it for anything. Right, pockets. Let's see what we've got in the pockets. One completely flat golf watch. Yep, that's going on charge. <laughs> what is it? It's a Garmin S2. It's pretty good. What I do... You see, it's already the the it's already closed up. This goes on the handle of my trolley, and then the lead plugs into the USB port on the trolley and keeps it charged. Yeah, so that hasn't been out of my bag in about seven weeks, and it's flat as a pancake. Half a sock. What do I put in half the sock? I put my watch in half the sock, of course. Tissues, you never know when you're going to have to blow your nose on the golf course or something. Driver key, I used to have a couple of these but I'm down to one now. Head covers, those are the ones that come with the ST200. They're quite nice, but I, I prefer the tall ones. This is a little swing guide gadget. Stop me from over swinging, but um, has some success, but not a huge amount. Bag cover. Down there is a drinks pocket. Insulated drinks pocket, got nothing in it. Nothing in that one. That's where I put my wallet. Top pocket this side. Chonkham Hardy ball marker. A couple of poker chips from Thailand. Pencil, biro. I always sign my card. I always write my card out in biro so that people can actually read it. And I got some, I got half a pack of mints, which must be, um, yeah, weeks and weeks old. <laughs> Next pocket down. Spare biro. Tape. Now the tape is for my booster battery, which goes on the tripod, boosts the phone.
standard Sharpie. Well, I, I did have a handful of T-Pegs, but I managed to drop most of them. I use a long T-Peg on the driver. Hit it high, let it fly, and it has been proven. Now that we've got actual swing and spin tools, it's been proven that if you tee it up, it goes further. Right, let's get down a bit lower. Ball bag. You might have seen this already. I got this recently. It's the Inesis laser. Standard sort of thing. We all know what a laser does, so no point in me telling you what a laser does. It measures yards. Kit Kat wrapper. Not sure why I'm keeping that. That's been in there for weeks. Ah. Two Kit Kat wrappers. <laughs> no wonder I've got a belly on me. Right, balls. Everyone wants to talk about balls. And I've got dirty balls. Yeah, I better clean my balls as well, hadn't I? Pro V1, 2015 to 2018 model, pearl grade late ball. They are £168 for 100 at the moment. Lasts me about three years buying 100 balls. And I've got one Mizuno MPS. Golf club. No, we won't do the golf club. Right, the 2019 Pro V1 doesn't feel right to me. It feels very hard. Um, I certainly don't like it chipping and putting. I, so I, I'm probably going to get some more pearl grade lake balls. But in the meantime, I found these going very cheap. Now this is last year's model. These are very, very good balls. They go as far as the Pro V ones. You get about a thousand RPM extra spin on your pitching wedge, so you're getting about ten and a half instead of say nine and a half. Because we don't put on the same amount of spin as, as the pro golfers. So it stopped real quick. This is a real good ball for stopping. Nice white packaging as well. It's not quite as durable. It looks scruffy a little bit sooner than a Pro V1. Although having said that, a Pro V1 goes yellow, doesn't it? After you've had one for a while, the, the white goes, it starts going yellow. Now I got an Amazon voucher for my birthday and I didn't know what to get. I found these, £29.95 delivered. This is the new Mizuno. RB Tour Ball. Nice silver packaging. So, uh, once we get back to playing some reasonable golf, I'm going to do some testing. I'm going to put this up against the brand new 2019 Pro V1 because I got a couple of sleeves of them. And I don't honestly know what to, what to do with them because I don't bloody like them that much. I suppose I've got to play them and lose them because money's money, isn't it? So I'm going to do some testing of this against the uh, the 2019 Pro V1 model. I'm probably not going to go back to the Maxfly model because there's, there's only so many hours in a day. So my next ball testing is going to be Mizuno versus Titleist. 
This was $29.95 delivered. Uh, box of Pro V ones. What are they now? Forty-two quid, forty-three quid, and the TP five X, the TP sorry, the TaylorMade TP five, forty-eight quid. I mean, that's more than fifty percent more than these. Golf glove. Mizuno again. I know. This is the. Uh, Synthetic. Why did I change to this? I used the Footjoy Weathersoft for years and years and years. And uh, I go to Thailand in 2018 and I went in and I bought four gloves. But they only had two Weathersoft in my teensy weensy size. So I took two of them and I took two of these. Now in that humidity, what happens is after about four holes, the glove is, is ringing and you hang it up in the golf cart and you put another one on. So you get through three or four gloves in a round of golf. Obviously, they, you don't throw them away. They dry out and you reuse them the next day. But what I found was that the weather soft would slip. So you'd be making a swing and because of the damp from the sweat, the club has slipped in your hand. And your good round, suddenly you've got a double bogey in the middle of your good round for no apparent reason. Well, obviously the reason is the bloody glove has slipped. So when I went to Thailand in 2008, I had two Weathersoft and I had two of these. And I hadn't worn a Mizuno glove in, in a decade. Well, these took any kind of shit, any humid shit, very, very well. The foot joy, not so much. So I've switched to these full time. And the other thing is, they're about two pounds a, a glove cheaper. That's the great thing about Mizuno. Balls, gloves, clubs, maybe not the irons, but you know, the woods. They just undercut everyone else. Same with the shoes. Those, those spikeless, 50 quid cheaper than the Footjoy spikeless. Why are you buying Footjoy? They're just the bloody same. A few Golf Psychic stickers. Golf Psychic bag tag. That's it really, that's what I got in my bag. Um, I can't think of anything else to tell you, really. I mean, obviously, I've, I have a tour towel that goes with this. I've got a variety of tour towels. <sighs> I need to clean this lot, don't I? It's absolutely stinking. How many days, how many weeks have we been in lockdown? And I haven't even looked at this stuff, washed it or anything. So I've got a pair of shoes to wash. i got all my clubs to clean. Um, the golf watch is as flat as a pancake, so that one's charging up. And it takes forever to charge up. Uh, well, I hope... Now, when is this going out? This isn't going out for about a week. So I hope you're enjoying your way back. I hope you haven't lost too many balls. And... Um, Hopefully we can get back to three balls and four balls and... Well, I don't think we're going to be playing competitions for a long time, are we? So anyway... Do as, when you get to the golf course, do as you're told. When you're outside of the clubhouse, don't join up with the two ball behind you and have a four ball. Stick to the rules and they'll let us stay out there. As soon as we start messing around with the rules then we put golf in jeopardy of um, being stopped again, won't we? So um, I'm going to do as I'm told and uh, you lot do as you're told and we can keep playing. I know it's a bit limited, but we've got to do it or we get sent home. So uh, take care all. And now I'm going to find out if I've actually pressed the record button and I've got something to edit. If not, 
I'm going to do it all again. <laughs> and I have done that. I have cocked up. I've done about five or six minutes before now. And, oh, shit. I, did, I forgot to press record. <laughs> oh, such is the joys of amateur YouTube. Oh, 445 subs. I seem to have got stuck. And uh, I need to get moving again. Hopefully when I start putting out golf videos, better golf videos, it will get moving again and we can try and get up to uh, 500 and do the giveaway and then get to 600 and onwards and upwards. Cheers guys, ta -ra.